Hello everyone and welcome to this video that was voted for by the Patreon members on patreon.com forward slash Brian Laley. Thank you so much for those who are supporting the channel over there and if you want to support the channel head over there right now and you can get access to all video content early before everyone else. So what are they voted for? Well we're going to go through and talk about radial damage and look at how we can do area of effect damage and we're going to look at actually two types. We're going to look at like explosive type damage where it's like a one shot one hit type thing and it's going to do damage and we'll go through the various options of Able to you, and we're also going to look at how to do ticking damage over an area of effect as well. So let's get started. So, to get things started on covering how to do radial damage, we can look into the first person template and I'm going to make my projectile here deal damage. Now, for obviously, for this to work, we need to know what we can damage. So, I'm going to make a quick little test dummy that outputs whether it gets in terms of damage. So, blueprint, we'll make a little character. Dummy. And in the mesh, <coughs> I'll set that to my target dummy. Like so. And all I'm going to do, just so we can see this working, is have on the any damage event, we are going to output the damage it's receiving with a print string. Okay. In fact, actually, let's be a bit more specific with this. If we do append this string, I'm going to add in A the display name of my dummy. So get display name. And we will want to get... We have to get self first. Self. Display name. There you go. And put that into A. And then B, I'm going to do colon, space, 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 space. And then put in C with the damage. So when they take damage, that should occur. So to test that working, I'm just going to do a quickly apply damage to whatever it is I hit. So we're going to do apply damage here. And the damage actor will be the actor that we've hit. Other damage amount, we'll do 10, for example. Damage causer self. Okay, so this will do damage to anything it hits. So I'll go into my scene here and just drag in my dummy. We just want to make sure that's printing okay as intended. Oh, we'll never be actually hit him. Uh, let's change his capsule here to glide. Custom. And it's set to collide with everything. Position enabled, pawn. Yeah, we'll just make sure that the projectile is set to collide with pawn types. So go to the collision component, go down to the collision settings, and here it's not colliding with pawn, so we'll just make that collide with pawn. Okay. Okay. And there you go, in top left you can see dummy 10 being mapped with it. Okay. So damage working sounds Pretty good. Okay, so that's all good. So actual radial damage then, how is that achieved? Well, let's make it so that when we shoot our projectile, we are spawning in some radial damage, like an explosion or, I don't know, whatever it could be. So if I go into my first person projectile, rather than use apply damage, I'm going to use apply radial damage. In fact, I'm just going to disconnect all of this stuff because we're going to keep it simple. And we'll plug that into there. Now, the difference is with this is I want the origin, okay? And that's going to come from the hit location. So I'm going to plug that into there. The base damage is whatever value I want to do. So let's say our base damage starts at 10, okay? Uh, in fact, let's just do 100. And the damage radius. So this is important. This is how far the radius can go. So if we put in, say, uh, 500, that means we've got a 500 unit long radius. So it's like a thousand in total diameter. The damage causer we'll put in self. And as you can see, we don't have to give it the other actor. It's just going to damage anything inside of that radius. That's all it's going to do. Now, what's interesting about this as well is that we have this option down here for do full damage. And we have this damage prevention channel. We'll leave this alone for a second as we just want to see this working. So compile and save. And if I now drag out a few more of these guys, I'm going to put another one over here and another one over there. 
another one over here. Okay, so if I go in here and shoot, the, actually I'm gonna make the the uh, the ball disappear as well when it does this. So just do destroy actor. Otherwise, it'll just keep bouncing around and setting off a load of these things. So just want to do it once. Okay, so if I go, boom, you can see that we've got different values per dummy inside that range. Let me do it again. 45, 36, and 9. Okay. And if I move close to this one, 86 and 2. So that's the second one over there. 86, uh, not 90 and 14. Yeah. So as you can see, the values are changing. And this is based upon their distance from the the radius. Uh, the uh, Sorry, the center of that radial damage. So I'm just going to actually simplify this a bit. Let's just bring in two of these guys. Okay. So if I go close to this one, there you go. 52, there you go. Now I've got both now. So 45 to the one on the left here and three being set to the one on the right. Let's get close to this over here. We can see it's now the way around. So that is how that works. Now, if you wanted to, you can also tick on do full damage. And what that will do is it'll apply the same damage to all the targets in range. So test that out. And you see 100 being applied to everyone, no matter how far away they are from the radius. So pretty useful, okay? Uh, the next one we've got here is damage prevention channel. So I'm actually going to leave... Um, leave that as it is do full damage and visibility and then i'm going to put in a wall okay so let's say i'll put in a little wall here uh level prototyping meshes and we'll put a little wall. okay so let's say he's behind cover okay so we've got two dummies and if i shoot in the middle here i used to get both of them now i only get one of them yeah because this one this one is blocked by the wall. Likewise, if I shoot on this other wall, I'm going to get this guy. So that is how cover works. And it goes based upon the location. So if I made this shorter, like that, you can still see it works the same way. But if I shoot on top of here, we can get both of them. Because they both can see that point. That's what essentially is doing. It's doing like a line trace essentially to the center of where I'm hitting. And if it gets blocked, then it won't take any damage. Okay. And that's pretty much it when it comes to radial damage. Now, alongside the dealing of radial damage, you can also uh, receive radial damage differently too. So we've got this currently set to any damage, but there's another one for radial damage. And... As you can see, it's very similar. It does still got the damage received, damage type, but this time you've got the origin and hit information about each attack. So let's say you want to say, um, not entirely block information, you can do overlaps instead, and you can determine the difference of how, like, how much protection they got from it. Um, but yeah, pretty simple um, set up on how you want to do that. So that's radial damage in that uh, sense of area effect. So the one time use of that. But I also want to show you how to do an AOE. So it's something like an area that you place on the floor and it does ticking damage over time. So let's say we are going to do that with this projectile. And instead of doing a single explosion with apply radial damage, we're going to do a area effect. So I'm going to create a new actor for this and do blueprint class, actor, and area of effect class. And the reason why we have to make a different area of effect class is that we need it to take care of its own timer, okay? So we're gonna go to the event graph and we're gonna do on begin play, set timer by event. And the event we're gonna drag down, do custom event, and of course one tick damage and this is going to apply 
the radial damage. So we'll do it as 10. Origin will be the location of this actor. So do get actor location. Damage radius we'll put in here as a variable. Much variable. And in fact, we'll do base damage as well. Right, so variable. And I'll call this one tick damage. So how much damage does it do from uh, damage per tick, we'll say? How much damage it will do every time, okay? And the time here is going to be how often it ticks that damage away. So we'll come out to a variable and um, uh, tick time. And we'll set that to looping. So it's going to continue looping through that tick time, applying radial damage to everyone in range. We don't have to worry about collisions or anything else like that. It will just go around and apply radial damage. And obviously you can add Niagara effects and other things on it too, like decals to help show the player where these things are. But let's show you this in action. So what we're going to do is when this projectile hits, we don't want it to apply radial damage anymore. Instead, we're going to spawn the actor of area effect. So spawn actor from class and choose area of effect. Now spawn transform, we're going to split that open and just plug in the transform location as the hit location. Now we also want to send over some basic stuff like tick time, damage per tick, damage radius, whatever you want to do here. So I'm just going to expose all these and make them all exposed on spawn. Oops. Expose on spawn. Expose on spawn. Go back to my projectile, refresh this node, and now we see damage radius, damage per tick, and tick time. So tick time, I'm going to do every one second, it's going to tick damage away. Damage radius is going to be 500, and I'm going to destroy the actor when it's done. Now, we also want to change the area effects, like how long it lasts as well. Um, so easy way of doing that is go back to area effect, and we'll do... Uh, Effective time for so how long is it effective for? And yeah, float, float, and instant editable and exposed on spawn. And what we're gonna do on the construction script of this or begin play, whichever one you want, we take out the effective time and we'll do set lifespan, and that'll cause this thing to disappear at the end of its life. Okay, so if I now go back into here and shoot and there we go we've got ticking damage for the character um let me change it from one second actually because that's going to pop up a bit too often uh not too often but um you won't see it stack on so let's change that to 0.5 okay and i'm going to go back to the dummy and just change the length of the string here to be 10 seconds okay so it should last a fair while and uh, I want to also in the area effect on the apply damage. I'm going to do full damage because that's typically what you'll be doing when you do air effects. You want to do full damage and damage causer, we just self sure. And if you want damage prevention channel, you can use that um, to help prevent people taking damage from it. So we're going to take that out for a second. I just want to show multiple people getting hit by this thing. Okay, so if I shoot here. You can see them ticking their damage and how much damage they're taking every single tick. And that will eventually stop because the lifespan of the area effect has been set. So it will eventually stop. Okay. And just want to make sure I actually set that there. No, no, where was it? Uh, effective time, I didn't change it here. I need to change that. Uh, let's say five seconds. So this thing lasts for five seconds. I'm going to change tick time as well to 1.5. Okay, so let me just shoot this down. And you'll see these two guys get ticked every 1.5 seconds. And the effective lifespan should take over and destroy it. Yeah, there you go.
And there you have it. Two simple methods to use the radial damage node. It's a very useful node for doing things like explosions and when you're doing magic spells. Thank you so much for everyone who voted for this video. And um, and again, thank you for everyone who is supporting the channel over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.